Okay, so today we are going to be learning how to fill some trace tables. So here is the first question that we are going to be tackling. So we're going to start by reading the question and then answering the question um, as it follows. So the first question tells us that this flowchart inputs the student percentages of three examinations. That's the keyword, three examination, meaning this should be three inputs. Okay, so it's very important to understand the question first. It then says if the average of these marks is 80%, so if it is 80% or over, okay, then the distinction grade is awarded, okay? So if it's more than 80%, which is the average of these three, then it's a distinction grade. If the average of these marks is less than 40%, it's a fail grade. So it's a quite simple um, a flow chart here. So it's a very easy question to do. And usually these trace table questions you can see have almost five marks right here. Put it in, let me highlight it. Five marks right there. Five marks. So it's a quite easy free five marks. So here we say it says complete a trace table for each set of input data. So we have set one, set two, and set three. So the first set, meaning this will be mark one, mark two, mark three. So already I know I will put mark you know, all these marks right here, because when I go back to the flow chart, it's telling us right here to input these marks, okay? And usually what this means is that whenever they give you these three sets of data, this is the input data. Every time they would give you only the input data, as you guys can see each set of the input data. So they're giving us the input data, okay? Once we've done that, we're gonna move on. Okay, let's move on. It tells us then total is equals to mark one plus mark two plus mark three now remember in a computer science exam you're never given a calculator so you have to sort of manually do it okay so i will manually do it so what is nine plus seven so i'm going to be not manually doing it so nine plus seven is uh 16 so 162 so then 162 plus 60 there would be 2 12 222 so the total will be 222 and you should practice how to do these long divisions, you know, long additions and everything. Because in the computer science exam, you're not allowed a calculator. And, you know, nowadays everyone's so used to their calculator, they don't know how to even do the basic maths. But hopefully that should be easy. Okay, so we're going to move on to the next part. So uh, we have completed the input part. We've completed the total part. Now let's move on. It says average is equals to total divided by 3. So that will mean here I will do 222 divided by 3. So 222 divided by 3 would give me an answer of 74, okay? Is it asking me what the average is? Yes, it is. So I'm going to write average would be 74, okay? So I go back here. Then it says, is the average greater than or equal to 80%? No, it's not. So I will go down right here. Then it says, is the average less than 40%? I'll say no, right? So because it is more than 40%. So therefore, the output will be passed. So you just write here. And there you go, you've earned your, you know, one mark there. Okay, we move on to the next set. So if you've noticed, these types of questions is all about understanding, you know, the basics. You just need to understand how the flow chart works and then the rest will also be uh, easy. So we've done the first table. Let me just erase all of this and then get ready for the next one. So let me just erase this and then erase the next two, okay? Okay, perfect. So, okay, let's begin the next set. Okay, quite easy again, as you've seen. Okay, so the next one you can say you do the same thing 20, 33, 67. The next one is the total. And remember, I already know that the total is just adding all of them. So I'm just automatically just going to be adding all of them. Okay, if I add all of them, it should give me um, 120. Yeah, so it should give me 120. So I'm going to write there 120. And the average is 120 divided by 3, 120 divided by 3, which is 40, okay? So my average is 40. And if you have noticed, okay, this is a tricky question. It's saying the average is less than, not less than or equal to, it's less than. Because it is less, not less than or equal to, that means that it's a pass, okay? Because it's equal to, so it's not less than 40, it's equal to. So therefore, it's still a pass, okay? Still a pass. Okay, we do the next last question, uh, next last set, and then we move on to the next question. So we're going to erase this. Okay, write the marks, 91, 70. Okay, the total will be the addition of all. So I'm just going to quickly do the addition of all. So the addition will be 79 plus 
91 okay let's just do this first so 8 plus 9 8 plus 9 should be uh, 17 so that's going to be 170 plus 70 so 70 plus 70 which should give us uh, 240 right so the total will be 240 okay I'm going to just erase all of this and then what I have to do is 240 divided by 3 remember to give us the average so 240 divided by 3 should be an average of 80 and if 80 is um, greater than or equal to 80 therefore the output should be distinction okay so the output for the last one is distinction so I'm just going to quickly write here this um, tension and there you go guys that's your five marks so that is the first question done okay here is the next questions and um trace tables is usually always tested in the paper too so you should know your trace tables quite well so here's the next question uh, let's read the question first because it's always important to read the question one second right here let me get the pen tool um again this is the 2020 um let's just quickly go to the um question okay so here's the question guys um this is the next question let's begin okay so it says the flowchart represents an algorithm and again it's another flowchart it's saying the predefined function div gives the value of the results of the integer division for example y is equals to 9 okay or y is 9 and the div for means give the y a value of 2 okay so what that basically means you need to understand the question first okay so it says the predefined function so there's a function called div okay and this div says it gives the value of the result of the integer division okay the integer division so what that basically means if i have y is equals to 9 then i say div 4 that basically means you know in other words divide by 4 so 9 divided by 4 can exactly go to only two times there'll be one remainder but the max it can do is only go um, twice okay so what that basically means is that the div or the y value will be 2 okay so let's begin it says an input value of negative 1 ends the algorithm so when there is an input value of negative 1 the whole you know program should be terminated so let's see what we can do with this trace table we have understood the question hopefully and it's very important to understand the question in paper 2 so ensure you read it properly so here it says complete the trace table for the following table and i already know when it becomes negative one it stops right so i wouldn't need the rest i won't need these values i wouldn't need them okay but it's fine they've kept them but uh, they're paying attention or they're testing you if you're reading the question so let's be Again, okay so we're gonna go back to the trace table okay and it starts by saying input value start by saying input value so I'm going to input the value so the first value is going to be 50 and I've, I've already inputted it and then next one is saying is the value negative 1 it's saying no so the value the value is not negative 1 so I go down then we calc 1 calc 1 is value div 2 so the value div 2 is 50 and if I divide that by 2 what do I get 25 so the calc 1 is going to be 25 so calc 1 is 25 we move on to calc 2 calc 2 is saying is value div by 3 so 50 divided by 3 50 divided um, 50 divided by 3 should be um, about 16 okay it should be about 16 uh, because look again 16 times 3 uh, what is 16 times 3 16 times 3 is about 48 so the answer should be 16 right here so calc 2 is 16 all I'm doing is just dividing it okay and ignoring the remainders okay you know like in this one there should be a remainder 2 but I'm just ignoring it okay so we move on it's saying is calc 2 is calc um, equal to value divided by 2 and that's true yes it is okay it is uh, so we move on and then we say uh, is calc 2 equal to value divide by 3 so that's no right so we start back to input value so it's it's wrong right because um, it's not equal to uh, the value because look remember calc 2 calc 2 okay let's go back to calc 2 I'll show you calc 2 was 16 okay and it's telling us is the value divided by 3 16 is 16 equal to value divided by 3 no right it's not so we move on okay we move on to the next input the next input value is 33 so I'm just gonna quickly write here 33 so let's move on 33 
So let's do this. It, is it negative 1? No, it's not negative 1. So we move down again. It's 33 divided by 2. So what is 33 divided by 2? Um, you could use a, uh, you know, you're not allowed a calculator, sorry. It's um, 16 again, because 2 times 16, 2 times 16 should be um, 32. So yeah, so it's 16 right here. So calc 1 is 16 this time. 1 is 16. And then it's telling us 33 divided by 3. 33 divided by 3 should be 11, right? So the calc 2 will be 11. Okay, so now we move on to the output, okay? First one says, is calc 1 equal to value divided by 2? No, it's not. So we move on then, okay? We ignore it and we move on to the next input value. So you can see it's quite repetitive. As If, if you understand the flowchart, you know, life becomes very easy. And the next input value is 18. So let's move on. Uh, is it negative 1? No, it's not. 18 divided by 2 is 9. And then 18 divided by 3 is 6, right? So it's 9 and 6. So calc 1 is 9. Calc 2 is 6. And then... We move on to the next one. It says, is calc 1 equal to value divided by 2? Yes, it is. So we go down. Is calc 2 equal to value divided by 3? Yes, it is. And then it says output value. Um, output the value. The, what's the value? The value is 18 right now. So, because, um, yeah. So the output will be not value, but instead, what is my value? So it's 18, okay? Move on to the next one. So 15 right here. 15. Okay, uh, and let's do this. So 15 divided by 2 should be 7. So I'm just going to directly do 15 divided by 3 is 5. I'm going to directly do it, but it's not going to be equal to. I already know because there's going to be a reminder for calc 1, so I'm not going to even bother doing it. The next value is 30. Okay, 30 divided by 2 is 15. 30 divided by 3 is 10. So the output value will be 30 because I already know it that both of them have no reminders, so therefore it'll be output 30. The next one is negative 1. So negative 1 will end the whole thing. So we're done with that. Okay. So 4 marks. And usually this is graded from column by column. So this is one mark. This is another mark. So ensure all of them are correct. So one mark, one mark, one mark. So that will give you your four marks. Okay. That was question 2. We're going to be doing now the next Okay, so here is the next question. This is question three. So we're going to start by, of course, reading the question first because that's the most important one. So we're going to be sort of um, highlighting the important stuff. Okay, so let's begin. This flowchart inputs the points won and the points lost when playing a game. Okay, so points won and points lost when playing a game. The difference between the points won and lost is calculated and depending on the result the player can move up to the next level, stay at the same level, or move down to the previous level. The flowchart finishes when the output is negative one. Sorry about that. So the keyword right here is when it's negative one again, like the previous one, it will stop. So whenever it's negative one, it's gonna stop, okay? So let's see what we can do here. So uh, let's just directly go to the traceable. Say it's complete the trace table for the set of input data. Okay, let's begin. So the first one is saying input, points one points lost so points one and points lost so we'll take the first two values this will be uh, points one this will be points lost so five thousand will be my points one and four four seven four will be my points lost okay then it says is points one negative one so it's not okay so we move down so we move down because it's not negative one okay then we say is the difference equal to points one what's the difference between points one minus points uh minus points lost so we'll simply just do 5,000 minus 4474, okay? Now this would require like a lot of, you know, uh, division and stuff like that. But I'm just going to, you know, save you time. And uh, I'm going to, you know, just use a calculator and find the answer. But again, if this was your exam, uh, you know, take your time and find the answer. You have enough time. They also give you the time uh, difference. So the difference is 526. Okay, then it says, is the difference greater than 1,000? Is it greater than 1,000? No, it's not greater than 1,000. So then it's going to be, is the difference less than zero? No, it's not less than zero. Um, and therefore, the output is keep on trying. So I'm going to write keep on trying. Okay, so keep on trying is the output. We move on to the next uh, points. So I'm just going to output here. So the next points one is 0655. Points lost is 2,000. The difference, I'm just going to save your time, is 
and uh, is it greater than 1000 yes it is so we say well done move up well done move up okay we move on it's only three marks but therefore it's very easy okay the next one is going to be seven nine hundred i'm just taking the next values nine eight hundred so because i use these two values i use now these two values okay what's the difference i'm going to save your time it's negative one hundred okay is it less than zero yes it is so we say sorry move down okay so the output will be sorry move down okay we use the next value so next value is three thousand and two one five zero which is the difference is 850 okay and 850 is less than 1000 and is more than zero therefore we say keep on trying so it's very easy very easy okay keep on trying so usually most of these trace tables is all about understanding how it is the next set of values so we have finished this the next set of values is negative one and six seven hundred okay now here and sure it's telling us if the points one is negative one end okay so i have ended and i'm done with that so that's my free three marks okay so we're going to do more questions till you master how to do these trace tables because the trace table is a guarantee question in paper two and you must know how to do these questions